Hey friends, people were asking me about recent nerfs and potential honing changes that could happen in Lost Ark. It's a little bit late, but I wanted to share my thoughts to you guys based on how the game has handled similar issues in the past. Let's talk about patches and the growth progression. First of all, I wanted to express and make it clear that Mr. Gold River is one of the directors that looks at statistics more than anyone else, and he makes majority of the decisions based on the masses and statistics to back it up. I've played so many different MMOs where developers do not do their diligence in analyzing the statistics. Listening to the community is very important, but that's just another set of data to make better decisions overall. This is important to go over because I know for sure the director is looking at the statistics, and all the changes have been beneficial to the masses, at least for the Korean server. For example, a long time ago, we used to have a time where it was extremely challenging for users to go past a certain eye level, which is 1355 to 1370. It showed out like a sore thumb. So he proceeded with giving out honing release and buffs for more people to catch up for the smoother game experience. Also, they always give out boosts and simple quest events to grow these characters even further, something like 1302 to 1415. Just as he said at the beginning interviews, his goal is for everyone to enjoy the Legion raids. I agree with this statement because Legion raids are super fun and it was what got me into Lost Ark in the first place as well. The game will always be passed in reference to casual mass players. I believe this brings in new players and it gives the game really healthy. I play way too many Korean MMOs where developers only listen to the hardcore players and that MMO died due to not having any fresh players. This game always has been severely inefficient for frontline people to push further for not much of a better game. There will always be relief patches, if statistics back it up. Not every player base utilizes the community, so this needs to be thought in a lot bigger scale. So our director, Mr. Gold River's goal, is hoping everyone will enjoy the 1415 Legion Raid Valton. Unless management changes, I believe everyone can enjoy Valton by this year someday without much effort, like getting a free 1302 boost with a 1415 Express Quest. Now let's talk about difficulty nerfs. Same thing as I mentioned above, Mr. Gold River looks at statistics more than anything else. Even if thousands of people in the community say stuff is easy, guardians easy, etc. If the statistics show low clear rate, they need to take action. It has to be always based on the masses to have a healthy growing game. Difficulty balance has always been the hardest thing in every game. Some things just can't be stressful due to difficulty. It needs to be rewarding. If majority of the people are feeling down due to this on the very beginning part of the content, which is tier 1 and 2, I think nerf is definitely justified. So I can talk more about this, but going further sharing my opinions, I don't think it's that fun. I want to share some of the actual key balance changes I remember in the past. So let's start with Argos. Early phases of Argos, majority of the patterns were guaranteed knocking you back. His inside-outside stomp patterns were at least double the damage and guaranteed knockback. Not only his stomp pattern had short telegraph, you had to memorize if inside is safe or outside is safe because it was repeating back and forth and resetting when he staggered. Since this was such an easy pattern to get hit, the penalty was too much, resulting in nerfing the damage about half and changing into a stun then knocking back. Going over to Valton, almost all Valton's patterns were knocked back and did double the damage, but it was nerfed to small stuns afterwards. During his end ghost phase, he used to have 8 stacks of immortality, which is 80% damage decrease. You would have to counter to remove those stacks 8 times. Now those stacks are 4 and 6 on hard. Vika's first phase had a color orb gimmick. In this gimmick, 4 players would need to put on the orb at the right color, at the right gate. It was guaranteed wipe if one person fails. After the nerf, one person can fail. The second phase had a black and red orb gimmick. Vika's absorbs 15 black or red orbs. You don't know the color unless memorizing it earlier. You need to block the black orbs and let Vika's absorb the red ones only. If one black orb is absorbed, it is an instant wipe. Now the nerf allows you to fail once. Moving over to Kakul Sadon, the third phase. The hooks used to have a huge hitbox and did a lot more damage and had no highlights. And the gimmick Circus Balls used to have almost triple the HP. So it was actually a really tough raid. One of the best nerf examples is Brawl Shaza, the third gate. When her HP reaches to zero, she does a special pattern. She spawns four red and four blue platforms. And all the players need to stand on top of it accordingly. After getting those colored buffs, players will need to remove their corresponding color multiple times. While their platforms spawn randomly around the map, there is also a Medusa eye in the center. You either have to stare at the eye or don't stare at the eye. If you get it wrong, it knocks you back with big damage, resulting in failing to remove the platform and failing the raid. In the hard version of Brawl Shaza, you had to remove 16 platforms, 8 blue, 8 red, and you also had 4 Medusa eyes spawn randomly around the map as well. Now the hard version is downgraded to the normal mode, and the normal mode doesn't have the Medusa eye anymore, with 6 total platforms you need to erase. Now talking about the last phase of Brush Aza, it has a lot of changes, but I'll only go over a few. The major gimmick is the blue and yellow meteor. 
In Brawlshaw's stage, there are 9 platforms. The platforms have 3 HP except the center one with 13 HP. During the raid, Brawlshaw will spawn meteors, yellow and blue. Blue meteors do 1 damage, while the yellow one does 3. If the platform loses all its HP, it's going to get destroyed. If more than 3 platforms get destroyed, it's an automatic wipe. Since all the meteors have an AoE range, you can actually make a mistake and impact multiple platforms at once. And as for the yellow meteor, the yellow meteor always impact 4 platforms. With total 4 yellow meteors falling down, the center platform will always have 1 HP at the end, which there are no rooms for mistakes. So during the fight, if you make a mistake of landing 1 damage to the center platform, you would always have to restart. So the nerf was made so that the center platform has 14 HP instead of 13, so you have 1 room for mistake. And as some of the normal patterns the brush Staza had, most of them were 3 times bigger in size before the nerf. So I think this is about it for covering some of the gimmicks that I know. I didn't want it to go over too many mechanics because that would be a different kind of video. So I chose a couple ones that really reminded me of. So the point I wanted to bring up was there were many cases of raids being too hard and statistics shown to a point where people did not challenge them due to too much stress it produces. The developers were monitoring this closely and patched accordingly to get a fine balance of challenge and fun. I think the difficulty is good right now for every raid. I think we should be excited about these changes because it shows that developers are trying to make a change and gather more data to make a better game. So I think it's really important to see the bigger picture. As always, thanks again. Bye.